Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. How do we communicate with the driver? In fact, in Windows we don't really talk to drivers, instead we talk to devices. So drivers are represented in memory using the driver object structure that we already met. It is created by the kernel and provided to us in driver entry in partially filled form. And so our purpose in this case is to hold all the exported functions in there and so to expose them to clients. However, the communication that's done with entities is always with device objects. And so if you think about, uh, for example, a hardware device, we may have two cameras from the same brand connected to the same machine. So there's a single driver, but each camera is independent of the other. And so each camera has a distinct name. Each camera has a, a distinct device object that represents it. And so we open a handle to devices, never to drivers. So at this point, our driver is not fully yet formed because create file can't really reach the driver because it doesn't expose any device objects. And so we have to create device objects explicitly. And in our case, for software-based driver, it's going to be a single device object as a single communication endpoint. And so these device objects are going to be created by a function called IOCreateDevice, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. And these device objects are going to be stored as a linked list or a simple linked list based on the driver object. And so these device objects can have names and these names can be open in some way from clients. So to have our driver do anything, we first need to expose a device object for others to use. So let's do that here. And so I'm going to use the function IOCreateDevice. The iCreate device function is, uh, looks very complex, but it's not, it's not actually too bad. It allows us to create a device to be associated with our driver. And so the first parameter to the function is the driver object pointer for which this device is going to belong to. And so we just hand it the driver object pointer that we have from driver entry. This will put that device object once it's created as part of that linked list. The next parameter is called device extension size. This is a parameter that indicates how many bytes would I like the function to allocate beyond the size of the device underscore object structure. So this is typically used for hardware-based drivers where there may be multiple devices and we need to store some information on a per device basis and every request get actually a, a device object so it's very easy to get to these parameters as part of that device. Because in our drivers, we're going to have a single device, any state we need to save, we can just uh, save as global variables, which is just simpler. So in this case, I'm just going to specify zero to tell the function, hey, I don't really need any more uh, bytes from you except for that device object. The third parameter is the device object name, and we need that name. In this case, we'll be able to uh, kind of get to it in some way. So this is a name that's going to be then used within the object manager namespace, which we can look at using the WinOBJ tool, which we made already. So we have to provide a Unicode string, so let's do that. So here's a Unicode string, let's call that dev name. So how do we provide uh, a name for the device using that Unicode string? So one way is to use the RTL init Unicode string uh, function, which I already mentioned. And the way to do that is to initialize that in Unicode string with a constant string where we're going to uh, name and put our, our device. And so the typical and the common case is to use the device directory in the object manager's namespace and then give it some name which should be unique. Let's call that process power. I don't have to call it with the same name as the driver or the binary. It's really up to me, but that looks like a good name and unlikely to collide with the other names. That's one way to initialize uh, this string. It's just going to call, uh, the, the function is going to 
calculate the length of the string because it assumes it's null terminated, which of course it is because this is a C style string, and then put the correct length and maximum length inside the Unicode string structure. An alternative to that is using a macro called RTL constant string, which can only work for really a constant string like this one. It can't be something that is pre-allocated because this macro does essentially the same thing, but it does that in compile time by using the size of operator to calculate the length of that string. So it's a bit faster because it's done in compile time. For our purposes, it's not doesn't matter much because it is very uh, small operation that's only been done when the driver uh, loads up but still there, these are two options you can select each uh, whatever uh, you want however just know that for this macro this has to be a constant string for the function you can use a pre-allocated string that may have been allocated dynamically for example so that's going to be good enough let me provide that uh, address to that uh, Unicode string structure to the IO create device function. The next, next parameter is called device type and it's really also for some types of hardware devices. So for generic devices which have no special um, request or no special uh, purpose the kernel knows about, we can use the file device unknown constant and forget about it. The next thing we see is a set of flags called device characteristics, which again are mostly useful for some types of hardware devices. I'm just going to, going to uh, use zero in this case, that's going to be good enough. The next parameter, which is the last input parameter, is called exclusive. Exclusive really allows me to say whether I allow more than one file object pointing to my device or not. So some devices are, should be exclusive, such as the serial port. So a serial port should be exclusive because it doesn't really make sense to have two clients or more using the same serial port at the same time. It's going to be messy. And so for our purposes, there's no reason to, uh, to limit that to an exclusive file object. So I'm going to specify false. And finally, the last parameter is actually the result. It's a pdevice object and pointer, and so it's a pointer to a pointer. So I need to create a pdevice object here, so I'm creating just the pointer. Let me, let me call that device object. I'm going to pass the address of that variable. And that should be good enough to create our device object. Now, of course, technically this could fail for various reasons. Maybe the system is too low on memory. Maybe this uh, name is already taken. And so I should always check statuses, as I already mentioned. Let me just copy over this uh, code here. And I can say that if we can't create the device object properly, I can say that we failed with IO create device and just exit the driver prematurely because we can't really get a device object uh, properly uh, functioning. And so that would be the case here, which means that now we are doing actual work by creating a device object, which also means that I have to do the opposite in the unload routine. So how do I delete uh, the device object? So we have a function called IODeleteDevice, which is very simple to use. You just need to provide the device object pointer. So how do you do that? So one simple way would be to put this variable as a global variable and then just access that variable and that that's also acceptable because uh, we're going to have a single device object, so why not just put it as a global variable? However, there's a more elegant way. Remember that I mentioned that uh, all these device objects are stored as a linked list based on the driver object. And so in the driver object, the first device object, in this case, it's the only one, is pointed to by this field called device object. So I'm going to use that as a more elegant solution to uh, dismiss of this uh, device object. And if I don't do that, then of course I have uh, a problem because the driver will not really load properly. And the only way to resolve that if I don't uh, call IODL device is to restart the system when the driver is no longer loaded. So let's see if we get something out of it by testing it. So if I go ahead and try to build that again, it will continue to fail because of these functions which I haven't implemented yet. And since we're not there yet, I can just go ahead and comment them out in the meantime so I can test this uh, device creation thing. 
Let me build that again. It builds successfully. Let me now start the driver again. Remember, it's already installed. I just need to uh, load it up. And so I'm loading that. And uh, we can see that uh, we get this output here in these uh, three lines. Notice we got some other output in the meantime by other uh, kernel drivers on my system, which also use DBG print apparently. And so now I want to see where that device object uh, is. And so that would be in the object manager's namespace. So the way to look at that is by running the WinOBJ tool from sysintelus. This is one way. And so remember, we put the device in the device directory here within the object manager's namespace. So it's supposed to be here somewhere. So let's just uh, type proc something. We can see process power right here. Here's our device object, which is now named and existing. And by the way, notice that right next to it is the device object for process explorer called proc exp152. So now we're also here and that actually proves that our driver created the device object successfully. So now if I go ahead and unload the driver again by using sc stop, we should um, make sure that actually this string went away. So I'm going to press F5 to refresh the list. And if I go ahead and look for process power, it's no longer here, which again means that we got our device object destroyed correctly and we can uh, move on uh, to the next uh, step. So what we get with the IOCreateDevice function, we get these pointers set up by that function. So you can see that the driver object points to the first device object using this device object uh, member, which we used in the unload routine to delete the device. And then each device object is just its own structure. It has a next device pointer to the next device in line if there is one. And if not, next device just points to null. We can see there are back pointers here with a member called driver objects, which point back to the driver object. So given a device object, I can always get to the driver object that created or manages that device object, which is sometimes convenient. If I ask the function to create some extra bytes for me, this is called device extension, then the device extension pointer here is going to point to that extra bytes that are asked the function to create. And so device objects, by the way, are created from non-page pool always, which means that accessing a device object is always possible at any, in any scenario, in any IRQL, we can always access the device object safely without any fear of it being, being paged out, for instance. So that's never a problem with device objects, which again is very convenient. Mm -hmm.